Legal luminary Afeb Balola says Nigeria should suspend plans for the 2023 general elections and opt for a stopgap interim government. Babalola, who is also a senior advocate of Nigeria, made the proposal on Monday at a media briefing held at the Afe Babalola University in Adoikiti, the Ekiti state capital. He raised fears that using the current constitution to conduct another election in Nigeria would only reproduce the faulty leadership and system being experienced in the country. The legal icon for the stress that a new constitution has become an urgent need. A body judge chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says the party will be roundly defeated in the 2023 presidential election if zoning is jettisoned. Speaking in an interview with journalists on Tuesday, judge warned that failure to zone the PDP presidential ticket means the party is looking for serious trouble in 2023. The PDP is yet to make a decision on which region of the country will produce the party's 2023 presidential candidate. The development has spawned polarized opinions among stakeholders of the party, with some backing the zoning of the presidential slot to the south, while others are calling for the ticket to be thrown open to all regions of the country. Well, joining me to discuss this for that is legal expert and political affairs analyst Libra Soshoma. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Now, uh, let's start with um, Afe Babalola's statement. Uh, what do you make of the legal icon statement uh, that Nigeria should opt for a stopgap interim government? Do, do you think uh, this is the right, um, uh, the right step in the right direction? I, I completely disagree with that um, proposal. Uh, even though I agree that um, the 1999 constitution has amended is faulty, but I disagree with an interim government. Um, against the backdrop, like I always say, of the experience we had with interim governments. We had an interim national government and uh, uh, the, that government didn't last for, for, for two months and it was booted out by, you know, a military government. And so, Having an interim government is an indirect way of calling for another military interregnum, which we cannot afford at this stage. Um, if, if as faulty as as um, uh, as crisis reading as we were in 1963, if we are allowed to wumble or fumble, and then with election, we probably by now would have gotten it right. But we always found a way, an easy way out. And that's, I think, is one of, um, and that's the same proposal that uh, um, the learned jurist is making also, the learned um, senior advocate is making also now, um, interim national uh, government. Where are we going to draw the people from? Is it not the same former, he proposed a former president and former head of state? Is it not the former president, the same former president and former head of state that led us to where we are today now, that for 60 years has not been able to give us more than 5,000 megawatts of electricity? that um, is proposing to come and head the same interim national government. So I, I think what, we'll, uh, what we have, as much as it is not a perfect document, what we should be advocating for, it will have uh, what we initially we said, once we have uh, um, electronic transmission of results, we would at least take a step further. What we should be advocating for now is that, you know, we should put structures in place to ensure that the election even though not perfect, at least it's near transparent, and where people's votes will truly count. Otherwise, you are not going to draw the leaders from heaven. There are still going to be people amongst us. There are still going to be the same set of people, some of them who are in National Assembly now, and some of them who already are ministers, some of them who have also lost out in the former government, and then that would people the new government, whether you call it interim or ad hoc. You know, they are still going to be sharing contracts. They are still going to be fashioning a constitution that will be tailored along their whips and campuses. So what we have really is um, people, a set of people that really do not have, you know, the benefit, the mindset of, um, you know, actually doing good for the generality of the people. So whether you call them interim, whether you call them APC, whether you call them PDP, it is the same set of people that you're going to have. It is not lack of laws, like I said, that we, it's our problem, but the weak power to implement the laws. A lot of people supported Buhari, believing that he had a weak heart. But unfortunately, look at where we are today. So if you bring an interim government and you have somebody like Buhari, who is the leader, are you not going to have the same crisis?
So let's talk about the argument whether or not to go for zoning. That's for the PDP. Now, where do you see this party leading towards to? Do you think they will opt for, for zoning or do you think they will throw the ticket open? I think I think PDP is in a my ass presently here uh, because um, they are really not too sure where they want to belong to, whether zoning or not zoning. Um, why they look? They are looking at their candidate. They are looking at um, the candidate that has um, the money to prosecute the election. Uh, people like Atiku that has money to prosecute the election. But if you if you if you opt for zoning, uh, that will skim them out. And then looking at um, the southeast, are looking at their strong candidate. Peter Obi seems to enjoy, you know, the good will of a lot of people. But the question is, you know, does he have the money to, to prosecute the election? That's another thing they are looking at. Because if you know PDP, one of the biggest crises they consistently had had been, you know, the issue of money. Immediately they left government, they almost went broke. Uh, they were looking for people like Amadou Sh um, uh, Madu Sherif to bankroll the party. So nobody is ready to bring out or contribute to financing the party. And so that's the crisis they have. But I think. If they harness their strengths together and actually, you know, maintain that zoning that they had started before now, I think it might give them a mileage, a long mileage. You know, remember this issue of zoning or no zoning almost tore them apart during the time of uh, President uh, 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 Sanjo. Also, during the time of uh, uh, the interregnum between Yaradua and the uh, Gulag Jonathan, you had the issue of zoning or no zoning. Almost also tore them apart. And it was the fact that they did not follow that arrangement with uh, uh, Yaradua and Gulag Jonathan, you know, who benefited from the death of um, Yaradua, did not follow through the issue of zoning. That was what eventually caused them that election. So I think uh, it would be in their interest to maintain that their tradition of zoning. But if they decide to opt out of it, then they must have a stronger reason, you know, and also find a way to have a candidate that will enjoy the massive support of uh, the entire Nigeria and uh, not southeast and west against also like i always say uh, the current challenges that apc is facing now because it's almost a, 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 an impossibility that apc might be able to go through primaries the way they are going well indeed um, legal expert and political affairs analyst liberal Soshoma, thank you very much for your contribution